Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crumb Show on Canada One TV. Well, I've got something really fascinating uh, to uh, talk to you about tonight and introduce you to someone really quite incredible. Um, and it is uh, Erica Johnson, who is an aerialist. I don't even know what an aerialist is, so we're going to find out about that. I saw some of her pictures, uh, some photographs of her that were, number one, stunning, but then also scary because she was doing things with ropes and, uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, ribbons or things like this way up in the, in the air that were just, um, you know, unbelievable. Sort of like the Cirque du Soleil uh, things that you see in Vegas or, uh, or down in the big tent at Ontario Place, but really, really impressive. So Erica Johnson, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm really well. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So you were just in Europe, and you've just come back, and you, uh, you, you're going to have shows in Hamilton and other places in the summertime. Tell me, where were you in Europe? Uh, I had a contract uh, working with aerialists out of France um, that took me through to Greece. Um, and then I was in Spain for almost two months working on my own work so that I had new and exciting things to perform at the festivals in Canada. Fantastic. And when you say working on your own thing, so you're just training, practicing. Yeah, training. And why in Spain? Oh, I've been working with an amazing coach there for a number of years. And so I had the freedom to go for a few months. And I was like, amazing. So, you know, I want to get into more of what you do, but, but how does one get, get into being an aerialist? You know, it happened by accident. I was working and I found a studio and it was amazing and it was very easy to become obsessed with. And this was in Windsor? Yes. So you were a university student in Windsor? Yes. And then um, I just started training and practicing and soon shows came up. Were you doing gymnastics or something beforehand? No, I was into like theater and storytelling and creating in that way, which is kind of still what I do. Yeah. I just do it really high with a lot of flips. Um, and so, so tell me, so you started training and, and, and what was the first? Are you doing, you know, trapeze or are you doing rings? Or are you doing ribbons or no, ropes? Or yeah, I, yeah, I started with just aerial silks and... Silks, they're yeah, called. Silks, those are the long ones that yep. come from the ceiling. And then if you turn them around and make a little U, we call it a hammock. Okay. Um, both are really fun and um, a lot of the stuff kind of you can do between the two. I started with them and... I really loved that it was like fitness, but it was also very artistic and you could make stories and, and kind of create in that way. And it filled this part of me that I, that I was missing. And how long have you been doing this? A little over 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. And can one actually make a living being an aerialist? Yeah, you can actually. It's really quite nice. Um, I do a lot of street festivals in Canada in the yep. summer. Yep. Um, in the winter, I do more festivals in Central and South America. Really? Yeah. So you travel a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm really lucky. And I've been working, coaching, and uh, teaching throughout the teaching world. Teaching other people to become yep. aerialists. Yeah. Now, you, so you do the silks. What else do you do? Uh, I primarily work on doubles trapeze. Doubles trapeze. Yep. And so that's when uh, some guy catches you after you've, you've flown through the air. That is the job. Yes. <laughs> Do flips. And you're doing flips fall. and somersaults and whatnot. Yeah. 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 It's really fun. And then I work on rope, which is like the Silk. silks, but instead of two, it's one. And instead of it being soft and shiny, it is hard and rough, but it's really good for doing flips and super fun and dynamic to watch. What did you do during COVID? Were there still shows to, to, to perform in? So during COVID, I actually owned a small theater. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, we did online shows. When you could do social distancing, we did shows for like 12 people in small groups. Um, we did a lot of online um, theatrical shows. But I'm actually also a registered nurse, and I work in downtown Toronto, so oh, I really? worked as well in the pandemic. A nurse and, a, and an aerialist. Yeah. And where's your, uh, where's your performance studio? 
Oh, my performance studio was in Windsor, yeah. and I was able to sell it in November, which was great because I walked out of my studio on a Tuesday and walked onto a plane on a Friday. And it was amazing. What a great, fascinating career that you've built for yourself. Uh, so if, uh, if people want to become an aerialist, how does one do that? They take lessons from people like you? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest find a local studio and get really, really used to being a beginner because there's a lot to learn. And, you must fall a lot. Uh, I don't think, I, I feel like you fall less than you can't get up in the beginning, you know? Okay. So in the beginning, it's a lot of strength building and building confidence with your body. As an adult, I think we get really used to what we do every day and just learning something that feels super foreign can be really humbling. Now you said that you still act and tell a story. Um, tell me a little bit about that. I was in Vegas recently and went to a, a show, not a Cirque du Soleil show, but another show, but it had aerialists uh, in it. And, uh, and they really were trying to tell a story. So tell me a little bit about you know, what you do there. Oof, that's my favorite part. Um, I think for me, I always know what I'm feeling and, and sometimes Working with creative methods is the only way for me to really get that out or communicate it. Um, so I know in my own process, I kind of go with whatever's going on for me or whatever story I feel kind of brewing is how I So think it's like of it. a prompt do. It, yeah. it comes up or, you know, at different times. So it's not the same story all the time. Yeah. Oh, and really? then I go into the apparatus and I go into kind of an exploration period where I feel what feels connected to that um, and then I look for I, I think for me it's a little less clear I kind of feel it and then I start to build on what feels like it goes with that and move away from things that are maybe outside of it and I'm usually left at the end with something that is nothing like what it started but it's and are you fun. usually doing this on your own or are you doing it as part of a you know like a Cirque du Soleil or a circus or you know other people that are doing other other acts as well so in doubles, I work with one other partner. Mm -hmm. um, I have worked with performance companies in the past. And I think as a freelancer like me, you kind of come and go into different things things as they come up. I feel like I kind of professionally answer the phone and, and, and I'm lucky to be included in some really cool projects. And so kind of go with the flow. What a, fascinating, working. <laughs> what a fascinating career. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more in just a minute with Erica Johnson, an aerialist, and find out uh, a little bit more about some of the places she's been and some of the performance she's done. Stay with us, everybody. Agosh USA online qurbani sahulat se fayda uthaye is saal Agosh USA aap ke taabun se Pakistan samet Palestine Rohingya Afghanistan aur Sham mein qurbani ka ehtimam kar rahi hai online qurbani ke liye Agosh USA ki website visit kare Welcome to Lake Shore Towers a smart and green architectural marvel Lake Shore Towers is Pakistan's first ultra luxury condominium complex for details call 416-716-6888 Now serving from four locations. Ontario is open for business and pleasure. Let us celebrate life again. Come to TD Mosaic Festival and celebrate our art, our culture, and our cuisine. Let's meet on July 22nd and 23rd for the 17th Annual Mosaic Festival at Mississauga's Celebration Square. 
and enjoy the award-winning festival with those who matter the most to you, your family and friends. Free admission and parking. More information, visit mosaicfest.com. Hum hai matchless. Pakistan mein saat locations. Canada, America aur Saudi Arab mein hamare offices. Hum PIA, Ittihad aur Emirates ke sabse bade ticketing agents mein shamil. To phir duniya mein kahin bhi safar karna ho, to ticket hum se lijiye. We are matchless. Call now at 647-933-9700. Visit our website www. dot matchless travels dot ca we are matchless to our third anniversary sale huge selection of furniture mattresses and accessories to meet all of your home furniture needs with the best selection quality service and the best prices in GTA only at complete home Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. We're having, I find, an interesting, very interesting conversation with Erica Johnson, who is an aerialist. And I didn't really know what an aerialist was. I thought it was a circus performer, and I guess that's sort of what it is. But we're chatting a little bit uh, about it, and uh, we're going to explore a little bit more. But I got to ask you, Erica, why two Ks? <laughs> you know, I really have no idea. You'll have to ask my mother. She never shared. <laughs> What a fascinating spelling of the name, Erica. Um, so, tell me a little bit more about uh, your experience internationally. So, you were saying that you were in Greece, you were in France, you were in Spain. Um, you know, it must and South America, Central America during uh, the winter times. The travel must be fascinating. I'm really grateful and super lucky to be able to travel and do what I love. Um, in 2018, I had the opportunity to perform in an international festival in Costa Rica. And do some retreats, and that kind of sparked going around the world and doing different things. Um, and it's really amazing to see the different ways that people present work like Ariel mm-hmm. in the different regions. I find is it uh, different? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Why? How? Uh, we have a little bit more in Canada of like an entertainment, classical ballet style of performance. It's very acrobatic and. Um, Organized in that way, it's very, very contemporary and beautiful, and it combines with a lot of cultural dance um, in South America. Mm-hmm. And it's got a very contemporary, meets old traditional circus vibe in Europe. So circus are, vibe. Yes. So for me, when I think of circus, it's I think of the traditional um, circus family big tent vibe. Yeah. Um, but now we have quite a bit of contemporary circus coming out, um, which is equally beautiful and very much focused on storytelling and a lot more connected to the. Well, the Cirque du Soleil style is like a whole, you know, hour and a half of a story that somehow fits together exactly. and has uh, different things. I was at a, uh, I mentioned earlier, at a at a at a performance in Vegas, and it was very raunchy humor comedian. And then uh, different aerialists and uh, and different jugglers and different circus acts sort of intermix, and it was like a variety show, um, which was kind of strange. Uh, and then uh, you know I've been to a lot of corporate events in the last little while that have had aerialists just sort of as the halftime entertainment. Yeah, and I think aerial means so much in the event world now. Um, once upon a time, we did mostly corporate galas and things like that, but I find what's coming in now is a lot. Different um, for the summer, I'm doing a lot of street shows uh, for the towns throughout Ontario. Where do you hook up the 
the silks if you're out in the street. I have a portable rig. It's 20 feet high. It's super fun. And Do you have to put down like a trampoline or? No, a, no, it just goes on like the On the pavement? Up. Yeah. And it's great. You can put shows up. Okay, so I've seen, you know, aerialists wrap themselves up in the silk and then they let go and they go yeah. down <laughs> and then they stop. And I'm like scared to death that they're going to crash on it. What stops you? Uh, that's a secret. <laughs> um, basically, you hope that you're wrapped in the right way and you make sure that you've trained yourself to do it properly. Um, but it's just the fabric itself. Unbelievable. Um, so do you have to be like unbelievably like thin and small and fit to do this? I think that's something that I've heard over and over again from people. Uh, looking to take lessons or feeling nervous about taking lessons, but I think that Ariel, especially contemporary Ariel, is really about like connecting with your body and feeling confident and finding shapes and all that stuff happens at any body type or any body shape or size or anything like that. Um, so I think especially as um, Ariel starts to show up in more and more towns. I would encourage people of all body sizes and shapes to go out and check it out. And you know, if you're not feeling it at one studio, try some out another one. Yeah. And you say you do these retreats in Costa Rica. What's a retreat? Just a whole bunch of a instructional retreat. sessions strung together? It's kind of like that. It's a space where you get to kind of get away from what you do every single day and who you are in all those moments and leave that behind and connect with your body's movement outside of all of your commitments and all of your to-do lists and everything like that. Can you be an aerialist at my age? Yes, 100%. So this is I not something... much older than you. This is, this, is something, this is not something you only can do in your 20s and 30s. No, no. It, you know what? So how, how young should you start being an aerialist? Whenever you get the feeling. Really? You should walk right into a studio. Yes. And give it a shot. And give yeah, it a try. Yeah. Okay, what's the dream? Where are you going to take this? What, where, do, do you want to be part of Cirque du Soleil? Do you want to have your own show on in Vegas? What what what's the dream? You know, I don't have one thing I'm focused on. I'm really open to the opportunities that are coming my way and have some cool stuff coming up. And I think I'm more of the person who just wants to create what I feel and see how it goes. So Chris J wants to know: Can you meet somebody? Can you have a relationship when you're an aerialist? Oof! Sure, you can. <laughs> but you're traveling all over the world. Or it's got to be another performer that you can also travel with. You know, I think there's a lot of ways to have relationships in in adult life. And I think that... It's got to be pretty challenging. It is, yeah. But I think, you know, I don't know. Everybody kind of figures out what works for them. And I think that's the nice thing about meeting other people who travel. I think it's pretty hard to have a relationship long-term with someone that, that isn't in the community. So, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show uh, is I think a lot of people get stuck in just working nine to five and corporate jobs to pay a mortgage and, uh, and because it's something they're supposed to do. And a uh, few people, maybe more at different times, uh, and today maybe one of those times with, uh, you know, rumors about and articles about the great resignation where people are resigning the corporate world and unemployment is low and they're trying to find something different that they want to do. But not that many people, I think, actually find their passion and do what they want to do. And my sense of you is that you found your passion. And even if it's a little bit, if not a lot of it, different, you've done it. What, like, did you have parents that say, what the heck are you doing? Or friends that say you're crazy? Like, how did you find that passion and have the guts to actually follow your dream? Everyone thought it was crazy. It still does. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I used to work that life. I used to work 40 hours a week in a busy cancer clinic as a registered nurse giving chemo. And I did that for a while, long enough to realize that life is really short and it's happening now. Um, and that's it. There's nothing else. It's just the time you have and the connections you make and how you feel about it. So no one else has to live in that life but you. And I think if there's something you feel pulled towards and you can identify that, go for it because a lo I think you're right. A lot of people don't know what they feel pulled towards, and so they don't they don't connect with their inspiration. And I, if people want to follow you on social media and check you out and come to one of your events, is there a best way to do that? 
Yes, I primarily use Instagram only. I am not great with social media. Um, I am a Tangle of Limbs online, and I post information. Tangle of Limbs. A Tangle of Limbs. A Tangle Tangle of Limbs, <laughs> and the Instagram uh, handle is what? That's a Tangle. Of a limbs. Tangle of Limbs. That's it. Okay, and you are Erica. I'm Erica Johnson. Johnson, and uh, and you've got a couple of shows in Hamilton and across Ontario this summer. Yes. And we can check you out at those events. Yes, and I'll be posting about those in my stories as they come up. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. I really me. appreciate it. Okay. So, you know, I really think that uh, too many of us don't follow our passion, don't follow our dreams. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted Erica to come in and talk about something completely different, being an aerialist. But, you know, as I've had the privilege of interviewing, you know, almost a thousand people on my radio show and my TV show, it is interesting that uh, some people have found that opportunity to really follow their passion and they, to me, appear a lot happier and, uh, and, and uh, probably have more resilience in the tough times. So it's a lesson learned. And as she said, life is short. Go out and go for it. So thanks all everyone for joining us and, and, uh, and, and being inspired tonight by Erica Johnson. Good night, everybody.